Hi, in this video I'll be talking about materialized queries. They can be used for quite a few different things, like improving a report's performance, consolidating data from multiple sources, archiving data and taking historical snapshots, budgeting and modeling, write back, and also creating a warehouse in its own right. In this video I'll be focusing on improving a report's performance. What I've done is created a report in Excel where I've got accounts going down the side and periods going across the top. I'll be using a system called SAP B1 to pull out the balances for the transactions for this intersection. First of all, I'll just create a basic report. I'd like to get the account description first, so I'll just open up Query Builder, set the mode to reference, behind the filter for the company to this cell here. Then I'll go to chart of accounts, bind the account to the account code, and then I'll pull out the account name. And there I have the name for the account. And I'll just drag that down. And there I have the all the names. Now the next part, I may be hitting on millions or thousands of transactions from the transaction table in SAP B1 to get these results. Let's see what happens. So I'll click on the Query Builder again. This time I'm getting an aggregation. Set the company to refer to the company in the top corner here. The table will be GL transactions and I'm going to bind the account code to the account on the row and the period on the column and then we're going to bring out the amount. I'm going to drag this across and because I have demonstration data this is coming back quite quickly but if it was on a very large system it, it could take some time. Now I'm going to drag it down and you'll see the extraction process takes place come up to the corner here and change the company to a different company and you can see there was some time there to extract the data. With a lot of transactions this could take uh, a few minutes. So with materialized queries what we could do is create a consolidated view of the transaction table where we have the accounts and the periods already pre-prepared in a snapshot of the data. To create the materialized query, let's go back in to Query Builder and we'll select materialized query. Normally you would have nothing here, so I'm just going to delete this and recreate it. You need permissions to create materialized query databases and also tables. If you don't have permissions, you'll need to go into Site Setup and allocate your account access to this. I'm just going to call this database materialized query and demo. Now I've created the database, I can add a table. I'll select on New and I'm going to change the query mode to summarize report. I'll select the product as SAP B1 and because I need to report over multiple companies what I'll do is multiple select both companies by holding down the control key. What Shopalite will do is pull data from both companies. The accounts, I would like all the accounts and also all the periods. So I'm just going to select all in here and for all periods. I would like the company. Now to get the company in the outputs what I can do is select the company and in the filter area and drag and drop it down into the outputs. I like the account code and the account name which will be here. 
I also need the period as well. So I'm just going to drag that out. I will rename the account name to be something better. And let's just preview that data. You can see that we've got the company, the account, account name, the period, and the amount. And if I scroll down. We've also got data for the UK office as well. The data for the materialized courier will be written into a table. Now, if you don't specify its sort order, the index will be automatically created for you. But to make the materialized query faster, you can specify a sort order. So I'll come into sorting and I'll say that most of my filtering for this materialized query will be by the company, account, and the period. And this way, the, the table will be optimized. If you have an expression in here as well, and would like that to be indexed, just set the name for the expression to start with the word sort, not the description, but the name. For example, sort my expression. In this case, I just want these five columns. Press OK and the data will be read and stored inside the materialized query. Next step is to give your materialized query a description. I'm going to call this the consolidated transactions and I'll press OK. We'll explore the other options later on. So here's our materialized query and it's ready for use. I'm just going to close these windows now. The next step is to redirect these aggregations which was going to the live system to the materialized query. So what I'll do is I'll select that region, delete all the queries and come up to the query builder aggregation and this time, instead of going to SAP B1, I'll go to the new materialized query database that we created just before. And if I go into the tables, you can see at this moment there is only one table, which is the consolidated transactions. When I select that, here are the five columns that we created based on that query. So to reconstruct our report, we need to filter on the company, so I'll drag that up into filters, bind it to the cell, and I need the account code, so I'll bind that on the rows, and I need the period in the filters as well, and that's on the columns. You can see the cell references, and then finally we have the amount. So I'll press OK, and we should be able to drag this across and down. And just as before, we get values, but now the values are coming from the materialized query, which is a much smaller set. There may be only a few thousand rows in the materialized query, but in the original system there could be millions. Let's just go back in and explore some of the options for materialized queries. So I'm just going to right click, come back in, there's our database. And here's our table. And if we have a look at the Options tab, we've got the ability to specify when this table is refreshed. Let's say that new transactions are posted and we'd like the materialized query to pick up those transactions. So we could say, for example, it's refreshed if the data is more than a day old. What happens is if we haven't scheduled an update of materialized queries, it will automatically update if anyone runs this query and it's more than a day old. But normally, you would schedule something like this to be updated, let's say, every morning before everyone gets in. There are also options to do delta updates. Delta updates are all about just taking the last week or the last month or the last journal and just updating the tail end 
of the materialized query. So we don't have to get everything all over again. This tab here is where we can change the descriptions and even do joins to other materialized queries, customize the lookups, things like that. That concludes a brief overview of materialized queries focusing on performance. There will be other videos that touch on concepts such as uh, budgeting and modeling right back, for example.